Hi, I'm Dan Cowan. I'm a senior consultant in the medical technology division at Cambridge Consultants, where I work developing new respiratory devices. And today I'm going to talk to you about sustainability in inhalation products. Sustainability, particularly the impact of climate change, is an increasingly important consideration for individuals, companies and nations. Medical products may not be top of the list, but it's still vital to focus on ways to improve their sustainability, especially with the very long development and approval cycles. As has been widely reported, propellant emissions from pressurized metered dose inhalers are by far the largest climate change contributor in the respiratory drug delivery space, representing about 3.5% of the annual emissions of the UK National Health Service. And the F gases that constitute them are increasingly targeted by international regulation. The search for alternative propellants is well publicized, with a number of talks at DDL over the last few years discussing promising new molecules such as HFA-152A, which offers a better than tenfold reduction in global warming potential. And there is also public buy-in from pharma companies with both Chiesi and AstraZeneca committing to release low emission PMDIs by 2025. This next generation of PMDIs and existing lower carbon solutions such as DPIs offer a reduced climate impact. However, these products still contain significant quantities of plastics and other polluting materials and can harm our environment at every stage of their life cycle. In addition to climate change, environmental threats include toxicity to marine life, for example, oceanic pollution with plastics, and depletion of natural resources, such as fossil fuel reserves. Producing the pharmaceuticals themselves also has a significant environmental impact, with the majority of organic molecules derived from petrochemicals and synthesis of APIs requiring numerous reagents, solvents and catalysts, and generating byproducts, all of which can cause substantial environmental harm. The industry must continue to adopt the principles of green chemistry and apply it to drug synthesis. We're also seeing a growing number of smart and connected devices and add-ons. These have amazing potential, helping to fuel a coming revolution in connected medicine, but the electronics add a whole new dimension to the sustainability debate, with e-waste posing an even more acute threat to the environment. The message is really that the smarts have to be worth it. They need to be implemented in a way that brings demonstrable value. Consumers now expect companies to strive for and achieve sustainability in their business practices and in the products that they produce. Sustainability is becoming a major driver of product choices, including in the medical space, and significant reputational damage can occur if a company is perceived as shirking this responsibility. Ideally, the required sustainability improvements will be driven by the companies creating medical products, encouraged by shifting consumer attitudes and new regulation, and supported by patients' willingness to adapt behaviours. The first step in this process is to understand where the current issues are, using tools such as life cycle assessment. This technique follows a product's journey from cradle to grave and considers the impact on various aspects of the environment at every stage, from use of resources, processing of raw materials, manufacture, transport, usage, and ultimately disposal. This holistic outlook is essential to understanding where the contributions are and where to focus efforts, and also serves as a useful what-if tool to understand the potential benefits of different approaches. Once the areas of focus have been identified, we can look at inhalation devices themselves and their intended use. Development teams make architectural decisions that have enormous bearing on the environmental impact of the resulting product, from obvious aspects such as how many components, which materials and what quantities, to the less obvious but arguably more fundamental areas such as intended use of workflow, features and functionality, intended product lifetime and the plan for disposal. These decisions are of course driven by making a product that is both safe and effective, but this doesn't preclude building sustainable thinking into the development process in much the same way that a product can reflect a company's brand identity. Looking at some specifics, user interaction and product use paradigm is a key area for attention. Many approaches trade off some increased user effort for an environmental benefit. For example, a durable device that must be reloaded with fresh medication, perhaps with other maintenance steps like cleaning, or a recycling scheme that relies on patient engagement and awareness. Any change in this space must be streamlined, intuitive, and as obvious as possible and above all, maintain safe and effective use. Taking cues from other industries can help build a familiar workflow, for example, looking to existing recycling infrastructure, and connected smart devices can also be helpful in this area if well considered. One route to improving sustainability is to reduce use of plastic and other materials through intelligent design and careful analysis, targeting both the weight and the number of components. This will lessen material extraction and processing, fossil fuel and ore depletion, and levels of plastics and other harmful materials ultimately finding its way into the environment. A second option could be to improve the lifetime of existing devices with implications for the number of products that need to be manufactured, shipped and disposed of. Increasing the use life of a disposable product will reduce the overall burden associated with it, 
amortizing its impact over a longer period. As use life is commonly dictated by the quantity of pharmaceutical, this may require larger devices with implications for user acceptance or novel thinking about product form and user interaction. Another key area of focus is on the end of product life. Effective recycling schemes could significantly reduce the quantity of materials that end up in landfill or in the environment, as well as recycling the constituent materials to be used in new products where appropriate. Some schemes have appeared in recent years, but unfortunately, uptake is still low, with GSK's Complete the Cycle scheme coming to a close in September 2020 after nine years because of a failure to reach the necessary scale. Over 70 million inhalers are prescribed each year in the UK, but only 2 million were collected for recycling during that nine-year period. It is estimated that if every inhaler in the UK was recycled, it could save over 500,000 tonnes of CO2 equivalent per year. It appears that much more concerted effort needs to be applied to increase the impact of these schemes. Rather than a standalone service, this could be a unified approach, making the process as straightforward as possible for patients and ideally integrating into existing recycling infrastructure. Product designers can help here by building end-of-life behaviour in from the start, designing for ease of disassembly and separation of materials. Looking now to reuse, one possibility is a reloadable product, where a large proportion of the device is retained for long periods, reducing the environmental impact per dose. Medication and other short-life components are replaced in a more frequent cadence, typically by the user in an easy-to-handle cartridge format. Possible drawbacks include increased device size and complexity and additional user steps. There will also be added burden on the user to determine the lifetime of the durable element. An example of this model is Boehringer Ingelheim's Respimat device, which exists in a reloadable option that results in 1.2 million fewer inhalers being disposed in the UK each year and a 71% reduction of the carbon footprint of the product. Beyond simply recycling, a more radical possibility would be to reclaim and recondition parts for use in new devices. Most disposable products are dictated by the quantity and shelf life of the drug product, but the physical components of the device can last for many times the intended life. If these could be safely collected, assessed and sterilized, they could be built back into fresh devices in a similar manner to surgical tools being reused in hospitals. This would need to be designed in from the start. The safety would need extensive proving with testing and qualification, not to mention buy-in from regulators. Another area is materials. Currently, it's common to use a wide variety of plastics and other materials in each device. We can change the types that are used, but as inhalation products and medical devices, they require approved materials that meet the regulatory requirements. This currently rules out recycled plastics and many bioplastics, instead requiring those derived from virgin crude oil. However, this is more due to a lack of sustainable materials having been taken through the extensive and expensive approvals process, rather than any inherent deficiency, and many are already approved food contact safe. Bioplastics are a very active field, and the breadth and scope of these materials is improving all the time. Current offerings are already suitable for non-critical areas of devices, such as caseworks, which make up a large proportion of the weight, but do not require exotic materials properties. This is something that is already appearing in other areas of medtech, for example, the zero-carbon auto-injector developed by Ipsamed. If these new materials and recycled plastics can be made more widely approved medical device use, then it would be a big step towards developing more sustainable respiratory drug delivery products. Advances in technology can radically alter the landscape of a sector, environmental impact included, but innovation is rarely focused on improving sustainability, although this is often a byproduct. However, approaching invention with sustainability in mind could lead to exciting breakthroughs that can improve our management of respiratory disease as well as our effect on the environment. As an example, we've already seen the emergence of the dry powder inhaler, and although climate change wasn't a primary motivator for this development, the benefit over PMDIs is clear. An interesting direction could be developing new atomization technologies, for example, exploring crossover between inhalers and nebulizers, as we've seen with the soft mist spray of the Respimat device. The very recent announcement of MedSpray's collaboration with Resifarm to develop their own next generation technology into a commercial inhalation product is another example. Or it could be some completely new thinking around other means of achieving respirable liquid aerosols without the need for volatile organics. So in summary, the next generation of propellants in PMDIs is an important first step towards reducing the carbon footprint of inhalation products, but progress on sustainability must go deeper than this. Sustainability should be considered and improved across the full life cycle of respiratory products as an integral part of the design and development process. There are a number of actions that product developers can take to achieve this aim, including design for sustainability at the level of product architecture, reduce the amount and variety of materials used and the number of components, increase device life as far as possible to reduce the number of products produced per year, 
recycle devices after the end of their use life and design for easy disassembly and separation of waste streams. Explore new user paradigms and harness user efforts and engagement on the sustainability topic, for example, with a reloadable device with replacement medication cartridges. Embrace new materials such as bioplastics and recycled materials and work with regulators to expedite their approval. Or to invest in the development of new technologies to radically alter the playing field. By following these steps, we can continue to improve sustainability in respiratory drug delivery. Thank you for listening. If you want to hear more, please don't hesitate to get in contact.